nature of protection of working women in india now if you see that particular topic you will get number of textbook n number of articles now what is the point of doing your research in that because your all questions whatever research questions you will formulate you will get answer to that then why you are doing again your research so that is the relevance of identifying existing literature so when you select a topic you make sure that that topic is not in a detailed manner dealt by any of the existing literature you have to identify the relevant literature now one interesting thing is when we say literature review there is a misconception that it is about making a summary of available literature in some of the dissertations some of the thesis i can see they will write one article name title everything etc then they will give a small summary about that article now that is not actually literature literature review means you have to tell what are the literatures hello are you audible hello yes sir you are audible my video is there my video is there the site will see anything here something happened in the video so we can see your slide okay okay fine no problem then it is fine i will continue so the point is literature review now how you will do or you have to identify the existing literature and you have to say what is the scope it's not just you are giving a summary of available literature you are supposed to say there is a literature but that literature is not sufficient enough or not addressing my research question even if it is addressing that answers are not sufficient that answers are ambiguous that is why my research is relevant so by analyzing the existing literature you have to identify the gap existing it's not just a summary you are writing but you have to pinpoint these are the gap existing in the literatures available sometimes when you do a research you may not have any literature at all direct literature at all you can say there were no such study happened that is the relevance of my topic that you can say if there is already some study like textbooks are available articles are available you have to pinpoint no this book this article discusses these areas but there is a gap that gap is one of your question or that gaps are your questions so you are going to identify answers to them then your topic will be very relevant then the next thing is when you will complete this work that is timeline in every research proposal you have to mention your timeline because research funding agencies or institutions are very keen to know when you are going to submit this and what should be your progress and what should be your uh, timeline so you have to explain what is your timeline then the next thing is what is the outcome of this thing when you do this research what is your contribution do your research what you will provide to the society or how it will contribute to the existing knowledge existing literature on that particular issue so this many components you have to make sure that in your research proposals they even without all this you can submit a research proposal but i will tell you when you submit a research proposal for a funding agent before a funding agents they are very keen to know all these components without all these components they will not accept your research proposal they will simply draw it and there are some funding agencies they will tell you what are the components you have to mention in that they will just simply tell significance of the study research questions methodology literature review etc 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 they will give a heading as such so you are supposed to write in that way 
So in the absence, suppose your funding agency or institution does not provide a structure of research plan, you have to include all these things. If they are providing a structure, you have to make according to that structure. In the absence of that, you have to necessarily include all these aspects. So this is what a good research proposal or components of a good research proposal. I hope that is clear. Is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. At least somebody can respond because otherwise I'll feel like uh, talking to uh, machines. Okay. Now, why you want to make a research proposal? That is very what is the significance of what is the purpose of research proposal? There are three important purposes as far as a research researcher is concerned. First one is you want to explain to your funding agency what is your idea or what you are going to do in your research. So that is the first and foremost purpose, conveying the idea of idea about your research. So in that way, research proposal will help you. Second one, that is another important aspect when it comes to a funded research. This research proposal will act as a contract between researcher and funding agency. Generally in law, this is not that much a problematic thing, but in other researches like science research or humanities, social science researches, where a question arises, once a funding agency accepts a proposal, whenever there is a uh, annual review or half yearly review, they will keep on ask more and more contents or more and more answers or additional information. Now, once a research proposal is accepted, you were supposed to do research only to that. The funding agency cannot ask, demand more information or cannot demand or modify. They cannot ask you to modify something new in that, include something new in that. So in that way, this research proposal will protect the interest of the researcher. So that is the second significant significance or purpose of a research proposal. Now the third one is it protects the interest of funding agency. This is something very interesting. Those who have already done research, you know very well. When we start researching, we have a lot of ideas. We will think, we will do that, we will do like this, we will do like this, like that, like that. So many ideas we have. At the end of the day, when we submit the research report, whatever we visualized, whatever we thought in our mind, initially, and if you compare with that initial ideas with the research report, I can tell you 90% of researchers will agree with me. The initial idea and research report having only 20 to 30 percentage relationship. That means whatever you intended initially, you have traveled far away from that. Because we can, when we imagine, we can imagine so many things. But when we start writing the same, or when you start creating sentences, you won't be able to translate their ideas into words. So that is why when you start doing research, you have a lot of ideas. But once you end up the research, that ideas somewhere will vanish. In between, you yourself will modify it. And your initial proposal and the end product may not have much relation. This is what really in reality happening in most of the research. So in that context, funding agency can stick on to research firms. How they can stick on to? They will simply ask, you have provided five objectives. Where is your five objectives? Your research report is not talking about that five objectives. Simple. So that way, funding agency can 
ensure that the researcher is doing quality research. The researcher is doing quality research. It is like those who have not done PhD or a dissertation, those who have done articles, especially when you once you submit an abstract, later on when you convert it as a full paper, you see how far your abstract and full paper goes hand in hand. You can find a very wide difference with what you conveyed in abstract and what you are finally written in the full paper. So in that context, research proposal will act as a base. Funding agency can catch hold you. They can ensure that your research is quality research. Why? Because they were looking at your proposal only, just five pages. With that five page, they are investing money. So they will say, whatever you have written in the research proposal, you have to justify that. Your end research report should go hand in hand with research proposal. So that way, it will protect the interest of funding agency. So these are the three important purposes of having a very good research proposal. Now, since I mentioned about research proposal, I have a question to all of you. Are you interested to do a legal research? Somebody can respond. Are you interested to do legal research? Yes, please, somebody should respond. Yes, okay. Are you interested to do research? Legal research? Yes, definitely, sir. Okay. That means majority or 100% of participants wanted to do a legal research. That is why you have all opted this news. Right. Now comes the second question. Why you want to do this research? What is the reason for why you think you want to do a research? Why you want to do legal research? Yes, please. Why you are interested to do legal research? No reason. Sir? Yeah. Why you want to do legal research? To find lacunas in the legislations. To find lacunas in the legislation, okay. Then, then, is any other answer for doing a legal research? Because you all wanted to do legal research, so there must be some reason behind that. See, I'll tell you. Since you are. Sir? Also, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Sir, then to identify the areas which are not uh, uh, identified, yes. like LGBT. Yes, yes. So yes. and on. Fine, I'll tell you. See, when somebody asks this question openly, when somebody asks this question openly, the answers will be like this only. I wanted to identify the gap existing in the existing legal framework or I wanted to identify something new phenomenon arising in the society and how, how law can be applied there. Like that, several oldest answers we do. In reality, 99% of legal research is happening for either of three reasons. That's what I understood. First one is to get LLM degree. 90% of legal research happening in India is done only for the purpose of getting LLM degree. Second reason, 8% of the remaining 10 out of the remaining 10% is there. In that, 8% research is happening for PhD degree. Nothing else. Then comes two percentage research, the remaining two percentage. In that, one percentage research is happening for getting funding. 
funding, thereby improve seed. Thereby improve seed. One percentage research might be, I, I haven't seen, might be happening for identifying the existing legal uh, framework and find out its gap so that to provide some su suggestions, thereby improve the existing legal scenario or legal framework. Only one percentage. I don't know whether anybody of you have seen a research wherein somebody identified the gaps in the existing legal framework, thereby they had given solutions and that solutions were taken care by the government. Now, when I'm saying no, identifying legal gaps, there are so many NGOs, so many public spirited persons. They have done research to identify the gap. Even I myself have done that. But whether the government has acted on behalf of that, that's the question. That is what I was saying. So most of the legal research is happening in India exclusively for the purpose of getting a degree, either PhD or LLM. Then funding, to get a research funding so that thereby we can improve our CV. And very few research is happening to identify gaps in the existing system. That is being done by public spirited persons. Some good lawyers are doing that. Some NGOs are doing that. Sometimes government will appoint certain uh, committees and everything for that. But that type of research is very, very, very less. So this fact you have to know. Now we will proceed further. Before making a research proposal, what all things you have to do? Or how you can make a good research proposal? Before starting writing a research proposal, you have to do certain preliminary exercises. First one is identification of funding agents. You have to identify a funding agents if you are doing a funded research project. If you are doing a PhD, you have to identify an appropriate legal institution from where you can do your PhD or where you can register your PhD. That is first one. Second preliminary thing is you have to identify a topic. Then third one is literature. You have to collect literature. Then these three things. Then the next thing is you have to formulate research objectives. Thing, how to identify? Some disturbance is coming regarding the recording. Is there any problem? No. Hello. Sir? Some voice is coming, keep on coming, recording is progress, recording is not like that. What's that? Wait, sir, let me check. Anyway, let it be. That will be. So, the preliminary stage of making a research proposal is all these things are the preliminary. Now, I will tell you what are the, I will little bit explain, I will explain these things. First one is funding agencies. First and foremost task for identifying writing a research proposal is you have to identify the funding agents. Why? Because research proposals you have to make in accordance with the funding agents. Every funding agency having their own ideas, their own format. So which funding agency you are selecting or where you are going to submit your proposal. So based on that, you have to formulate. So the first and foremost task is identifying the research, sorry, funding agents. Or even if you are going to do a PhD research, you have to identify which institution you are going to do the research. Now that institution may have an institutional guideline for submitting proposal. And they may tell you what are the components of the proposal. So accordingly, you have to make it. So that is why I am saying the first and Initial step is identify yeah. 
Excuse me, sir. Sir, you are not audible. Hello. Am I audible? Yes. Sir? Yeah. Now it is okay, sir. I will just. Uh... I'll, I'll just uh, rejoin. <laughs> 